Welcome back to MWC Digest. Now, what does the world look like in 2030 and beyond? Well, the rate at which technology is developing promises to have a profound effect on all our lives. More on that shortly. First, here are the main headlines. AI is the hot topic at MWC. This chart shows the number of storylines coming out of the Congress into the media. They're all about AI. A new report out from GSMA backs up how 5G will benefit all economic sectors. It says 36% of benefits will come from manufacturing over the next seven years. And it's not technology that's drawing the biggest crowds at MWC, but a cup, the FA Cup to be precise. It's here and fast becoming the most popular spot for a selfie. Here at MWC, some of the world's leading tech innovations are on display and some of them feel like they've come straight out of a movie. There are flying cars, holograms that talk and my personal favourite, an AI robot. But what are all these innovations doing at a telco conference? That's a question I put to Nokia's Chief Strategy and Technology Officer, Nishant Batra. See, the telecom industry that we represent is an enabler for all of this innovation. At the end of the day, when the car flies, it's still got to communicate. When a drone is up in the air with the payload, it has to communicate back. Either it has to communicate to get some kind of message, some kind of command and control, or it has to communicate to get its localization or positioning. So communications is a de facto enabler now for all of these exciting devices, the flying car that you came across from Harry Potter or otherwise, but yes. <laughs> yeah, they all need it. But what are the challenges with that? How are networks, how are they going to need to adapt? The way I look at it is the networks are already very complex. The one message I have given to every customer, networks actually need to simplify. We've been working with you know, connecting people, connecting things for 30 years. We have built very complex tech stacks now. And that's what makes us flow. Now it's time for simplification, readjustment, and then be ready for the next transformation. So simplify first. Simplification means make sure you only keep what you need, cloudify, softwareize, then be ready. I want to talk a bit about um, AI. Obviously, that's a big topic here at the conference. It promises to be transformative to, to life in general. But where do you see AI heading in the next decade? Everywhere. AI will be everywhere. Maybe in the flying car, for sure in the flying car. It has to be there. AI is, if you think about why AI first, because artificial intelligence is smarter than natural intelligence on certain things. With AI, for example, pure pattern recognition, the amount of data it can store and process and train on is immense. So on those applications, AI is very, very strong. And we need to be very, very clear. Where is AI suitable? Where is it not suitable? Don't force the issue. So my view is it will be everywhere. The question is who will use it most judicially and most valuably? By 2030, it's estimated most of us will be using AI and the metaverse. We'll all have wearable devices. Experts say this is a huge opportunity for firms like Nokia. It's an expansion of computing that is exciting. And I think from a telco perspective, uh, we're going to need connectivity at levels we have never seen. That is where the opportunity is, right? Because you're talking about people wearing these devices, everyone outside the home wearing these devices, you know, millions if not billions of people with these devices, we're going to need connectivity at levels we've never seen. But does Nishant agree? I want to move on to the metaverse, yes. talk a bit about that. Some people might think that it's, it's just about games or meeting Mark Zuckerberg in a bar or something like that, but obviously there are some important and potentially game-changing business applications as well. To us, metaverse is actually in two dimensions. There's a time dimension to it, then there is a application dimension to it. The time dimension to it is, we are today in the world of what we call as digital twins, which is enabled by something called spatial computing. We're gonna to move to something called virtual reality, which is what Mark was aspiring for. Then we go to something called augmented reality to mixed reality. If you look at the new Apple device, they have skipped the first three and they're going to mixed reality in that device. That's the time dimension of it. The application dimension of it, we can use it for Kung Fu, like a consumer application. 
We can use it for an enterprise application like collaboration, do this interview through the metaverse, or we can use it in an industrial application where that flying drone that we talked about is enabled through an augmented reality versus in true reality. So I'll give you an example, right? When you're looking at dangerous, very dangerous environments where humans have to operate, would you rather have a metaverse driven through intelligence that is artificial, or would you rather have a 20-year-old guy walk into that environment? These applications will come, and then we will realize the benefits of them. A foundation to all of this is a move towards 6G, uh, the next area of networks that Nokia is planning to make commercially available by 2030, I believe. So what is Nokia's role in that? I will reverse the question if you're okay with it. The foundation of all this is not 6G. Okay. All of this will make sure 6G is needed. So it's not like without 6G this will not happen. A lot of this will begin to happen. And then as these become more pervasive, as these become more ubiquitous, and demand something different from the network, that's when 6G will raise its hand saying, now you guys need me. That's when 6G comes. And that's quite exciting. It is extremely exciting. It is important that excitement comes with value. And we need to make sure of that.